Good day, and thank you for watching my talk. My name is Sami Koyejo. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I also spend some of my time at Google Research. Today, I will discuss my academic work on fault-tolerant federated and distributed learning. The discussion today is research in collaboration with Song Xie and Indy Gupta, both at Illinois. Given this audience, I will assume that we mostly agree that distributed learning and federated learning have many potential benefits, particularly for training speed and for privacy. Nevertheless, distributed machine learning is susceptible to failures, some of which are unique to the distributed setting. Common issues include issues such as hardware failures, bit flip computation errors, as an example, software failures such as incorrect, incorrect label coding, and communication failures such as dropped updates. Beyond these benign cases, distributed training is susceptible to new kinds of adversarial attacks. These include coordinated training attacks, sometimes called Byzantine attacks. It may be useful for those less interested in adversarial settings to recall that worst case robustness is also a good proxy for failure robustness when possible errors are unknown and unmodeled. So protecting against the worst case also protects against more benign cases. The cartoon here shows a simple situation where a single gradient pointing in the wrong direction can lead to an arbitrary error in the aggregated gradient for distributed learning. I will expand on these cases in the next uh, few minutes. So I will focus on two of the most common strategies for distributed machine learning. The first approach is distributed training. Here, this involves distributed gradient computation where the server aggregates gradient updates. And the second is federated learning, which involves distributed training on local data where model updates are computed on the devices and the server aggregates model parameters. Let's begin with robust distributed stochastic gradient descent. For a robust distributed SGD, we will focus on the centralized model. Here, the workers pull the current model from the server, compute local gradients, then push this gradient to the server for aggregation. We consider the threat model, where a subset of workers are adversarial in the worst case. Thus, may send back arbitrary and potentially coordinated updates disguised as gradients. Early work in this area suggested that robust aggregation was a good way to deal with these issues. Some salient examples include median and crumb as robust aggregation strategies. Specifically, early work focused on robust aggregation such that the aggregated gradient is close to the expected gradient. However, in some recent work, we have shown that one can construct an attack that satisfies this expected gradient error in terms of guarantees, yes, points in the wrong direction. We call such manipulations inner product attacks. The key insight is that for optimization problems and for learning problems, robust mean estimation is less important than robustly estimating the right descent direction. Here's an example showing how exploiting this observation breaks both median and crumb. Now this is in cases that satisfy all the assumptions in their primary theoretical results. In these examples, the rust aggregation is effective for standard attacks, that is, median and crumb are effective when they're standard attacks, but they ultimately break down when using inner product attacks. And this is easily activated by the attacker at any epoch. So as a remedy to such issues, we propose a new approach called Xeno. Xeno replaces robust aggregation with a stochastic descent filter. The key idea is to filter out k gradients that do not help the optimization. Further, we use a small sample stochastic estimate of this filter to ensure that it's efficient for large-scale problems. We show that aggregation using Xeno is robust. 
that is with up to few field, sorry, with up to Q field or malicious workers out of M, convergence using Xeno aggregation incurs an additional cost that grows with the number of field devices, but also improves with minimal filtering. Thus, ideally, the number of filter gradients is balanced by the expected tolerance for anticipated failures. To get a better understanding of this work, it's useful to contrast with some previous work. So in contrast to previous work, Xeno is more robust to new kinds of attacks, but it's also more efficient and tolerates more than half of the workers potentially being adversarial, significantly improving over existing work. Here are some experimental results on CIFAR-10, highlighting robustness to bit flip errors. Here, if a worker is attacked, the sign of its gradient is flipped. The left plot shows accuracy, so higher is better. The right plot shows the loss, so lower is better. These results show that Xeno outperforms both median and crumb, particularly when there are more attacked workers than benign workers, which is a known failure case of median and crumb, but also still outperforms in cases where there are fewer attackers uh, than benign workers. The mean without fillers is also shown on the plot as an empirical upper bound. Next, I will outline uh, robust federated learning, uh, shifting gears from uh, distributed learning. Here, once again, we'll focus on the centralized model. So once again, the workers pull models from the server, compute full model updates with multiple iterations, and then push these updates to the server for aggregation. We consider a threat model where a subset of workers have errors or failures that are potentially adversarial and send back arbitrary, potentially coordinated model updates. In this setting, we can use a trim mean aggregation. So this removes the largest and smallest B values dimension wise before computing the average. Trim mean is a fairly classic technique and is a known standard approach for estimating robust averages. We show that combining trim mean with some smoothing results in a robust strategy. With up to Q failed and malicious workers out of K random active devices in every round, the convergence takes a hit in terms of number of fills devices, uh, yet improves with the number of participating devices and trim models. Once again, ideally, the amount of trimming is balanced by the expected or anticipated tolerance for failures. The proposed approach inherits lots of good properties from previous work. So this includes robustness to potential dropout and limited participation in each round, but also adds robustness to failures, and I think importantly, improves convergence with non-ID data via smoothing. Here are some experimental results on CIFAR-10, highlighting robustness to label flip errors. Here, 10 workers out of 100 are selected randomly in each iteration. There are up to four attack workers. Here, all of the labels on the training data on an attack worker are flipped from initially being zero to nine to nine to zero. Each worker has the same amount of data and the left plot shows accuracy, so higher is better. And the right plot shows the loss, so lower is better. These results show that attacks lead to catastrophic failure. In contrast, our robust federated average matches the standard federated average approach in terms of particularly the standard federated averaging when there are no attacks, in terms of accuracy and is also close in terms of loss. Next, here are some experimental results on CIFAR-10, highlighting robustness to label flip errors. Importantly, the data are unbalanced across workers, as in contrast to the previous case, with some workers having orders of magnitude more data than others. I'll leave some details of this and the experimental setup to the papers, which I'll point to at the end. In this setting, 10 workers out of 100 are selected randomly in each iteration. And here are all the training data labels for an attack worker are flipped from initially 0 to 9 to 9 to 0. The left plot shows accuracy, so higher is better. The right plot shows loss, where lower is better. These results show that the attack model performs close to the non-attack case in terms of both accuracy and loss. And when filtering is removed, so using the standard federated averaging approach, uh, the algorithm fails when there are attacks. So in summary, I've presented two main results. 
First, I've shown that suspicion-based aggregation is effective for distributed stochastic gradient descent and is robust to more than half adversarial, potentially adversarial workers. This improves significantly unknown results. Next, I've also shown that smooth trim mean aggregation for federated learning is robust to unbalanced data, communication failures, and adversarial or failed devices. As I highlighted at the beginning, I wish uh, to uh, state again, importantly, that while we focus on adversarial device robustness, remember that worst case error robustness is a really good proxy when uh, potential failure modes are unknown and unmodeled. So worst case robustness offers protection for less severe settings. For more details on anything I've discussed today, please read our relevant papers. We have work, papers I discussed, in ICML, in UAI, and in uh, ECML recently. I'll also highlight a few more papers that might be of interest to you. Uh, mostly, we've been exploring asynchronous extensions of some of these training methods in both uh, distributed learning and federal learning settings. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>